Let me know if we're live. I never know what this little time delay does. Hey, everybody. Economic Ninja here. I am not going to be my normal chipper self today. <laughs> I'm feeling a little under the weather, quite frankly. Uh, but I couldn't sleep. And so <laughs> I decided to drive out here and do some news. And we're going to talk about real estate. Sorry, I'm a, I'm a little groggy. Uh, you know, first off, don't let anything get you down in this world. If you're not feeling well or you're not, you just don't feel like there's a lot of people that are, are done trying. There's, they're done fighting. And I'm not joking. Like, no matter how you feel, you can always turn your, yourself around, your attitude around. And the one way that I've found to turn myself around is get around positive people. I know it sounds funny. I'm just bringing that up right now during a live stream. But I mean, when you feel bad, you feel bad. Sorry. So <laughs> if I'm yawning or grunting, sorry. All right, guys, we're going to talk about, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about the housing market. It blows me away uh, because I truly did live through the 06 to 08 period, selling off my homes, stopping my flipping business, watching the emotions and what people would talk about. Um, a lot of mockers out there that had just gotten into the real estate game after watching me do it for four or five years prior to that and being very successful, wildly successful, actually. I was a full-time firefighter and, and at the same time going home and working all four days off flipping homes with my wife. <sighs> One young child, it was, it was chaos, but we were making amazing money. But then to all of a sudden flip and switch because of political issues and, and economic issues in the country and watching interest rates go up back then, it was wild to see how people reacted. Now to watch how people are reacting and you add on top of that a pandemic, supply chain issues and massive inflation. And it just it's to me, it is absolutely mind blowing that people do not understand what is going on. Oh, and somebody asked earlier if they could still have the discount for the course. I put the discount link to 80% off to the real estate crash course. Oh, and everyone that owns the crash course, I've just sent four new lessons, uh, bonus lessons to the editor. And we should have those up by this uh, end of this weekend, but just with down upload times and, and editing. Okay, so go and check those out because you already own the course. All right, this I've got a couple stories and what people need to realize we're going to talk about, you know, how the how this one's entitled the housing market seller strike is so ruthless that only seven nations of the 200 largest markets are back to pre pandemic levels. You have to understand there's this whole that's a joke that title a seller strike sellers aren't striking. They're in jail right now. People want to be able to move up in this world. People want to be able to sell their house and buy a nicer house. They can't. It's end game for them. And you are going to see this not end well. Another thing people don't realize is that most people in their homes have a mortgage attached to them and they depend solely on their income to pay that mortgage. I know that sounds crazy. It sounds like it's the most logical thing, but markets get really out of whack and go way illogical. And this market is illogical. When we can see uh, the statistics out of the Fed showing that only about 46% of households can pay a $400 emergency with cash, think about how many of those people have mortgages. Then if you just took away the $400 and you moved it up to $1,000 or let's say $5,000 or shoot, no, let's go even easier. Let's say the amount of equivalent to one mortgage payment. Let's say $2,000 to $2,500. What percentage in your uh, uh, thinking, put it down in the comment section, would be the percentage of people that could deal with a one mortgage payment worth of an emergency? Let's say their car, their engine blows. They need a new transmission. Um or they lose their job and they are going to go get another. It sounds funny. This is the craziest thing. You lose your job and you go get another job, but there's that delay between you know losing your job and getting another job to going to get your next paycheck. So you may miss that one mortgage payment, right? The percentages in your percent would be high. I believe personally, it would be like upwards of like 65%, 70% of the nation would not be able to cope with that. All right. So here's the deal. This is not a strike of sellers. This is a tragedy right now. 
And yeah, RJ, thanks to the super chat. She just brought up credit card debt just hit over a trillion dollars for the first time. What does that say? It says that the consumer is done and the consumer is living on a lifeline. Now, there's two events that are going to come that are going to destroy that lifeline. First, credit uh, is going to dry up because of a liquidity crisis that I personally believe is coming this year. Secondly, um, people are going to have their credit, uh, what's it called? They're going to fall behind like one month. They're going to have their credit seized, like locked up, or they're just voluntarily by the, not the consumer, but the credit card company, they're going to have them stop their, their amount of credit, like their available credit. They're going to shrink it down. All right, so let's go through this story, and then I'm going to show you a story that really shows how big this foreclosure market is going to be and why. And it is going to blow your mind because it is the simplest thing, but it is already exploding in, in Florida, and it's already starting in California. All right, so here we go. Among the 200 largest housing markets tracked nationwide, 193 markets exhibited inventory levels in July of 2023 that were lower than those of July 2019. Okay, the surge in housing demand in 2020 and 2021 was no substantial was so substantial that the Federal Reserve researchers estimated that housing supply would have to have needed to increase by a staggering 300 percent in order to match this pandemic's housing's demand surge. This surge was primarily propelled by the shift to remote work and the household formation boom triggered by the separation of roommates seeking greater space. At the peak of the pandemic housing boom, only 546,000 homes were available for sale on Realtor.com in July of 2021, a sharp decline from uh, 1.2 million in 2019. It says the housing demand boom was ultimately subdued by last year's mortgage rate shock, which pushed the average 30-year uh, mortgage rate from a three-handle to a seven-handle. I, I cannot get over that 99% of the real estate agents and 99% of the YouTubers out there just don't simply understand how this works. They seem to think that we're in a housing crisis, a housing shortage, because there's less homes available on the market. Well, let me explain something extremely clear, and I'm going to use 2007 as an example. We didn't have an explosion in population. I know. It sounds crazy. As a matter of fact, we have more baby boomers moving out of their homes into care facilities. Those are blown up, which opens up inventory. We have baby boomers passing away right now. That's the, the biggest generation, right? We don't have this sudden explosion since the last recession. But what we do have is exactly what happened in 2005. Interest rates took off again because the Fed started raising them. Nobody could afford to sell their home and buy another home because they screwed up their finances. And there wasn't an increase in uh, um, wages back then to deal with the sudden high price in gas, the jump in the price of vehicles and housing. And so they locked down. And everyone's like, back then, we got a housing crisis. We need more houses. And they started to subsidize houses and all this kind of stuff. And another thing is you all of a sudden had in 2005, 2006, all of these late bloomers that showed up to the housing market way late. And they went, oh my gosh, everyone's making money. Holy cow, this is insane. I want a part of it. And they were too late to the game. But they ran into all of those negative amortization loans and those create, and remember, negative amortization loans came about because the housing market was too expensive. We're already seeing things similar to that, where Rocket Mortgage says, you don't need to put down 3% for a government conforming 30 year fix. We'll do it. We'll take care of 2%. You do the one. That's how bad it is, right? So they're already doing these really weird things. They're also doing uh, no income verification now for people with their own businesses. They're back to this stuff. Um, so, and I said that would happen a couple of years ago. We don't have a housing shortage. We have a shortage of, of people being able to sell to morons that are racing into a, a, a housing market that is going to, it already is imploding. And you're going to see, and I'll, let me explain something here, because you got a bunch of YouTubers out there. So you told you housing isn't going down. I'm like, well, first, the National Association of Realtors says that year over year houses are down. Median home price. Deal with it. Like, at least own up to that fact. I don't care what percentage you think a crash is. I'm telling you, it's coming down. 
Secondly, you got a bunch of fools that were running out there and they were literally on YouTube making a million bucks a month, getting you to buy houses a year and a half ago. Now all they're talking about is a housing crash. Pretty cool. Pretty sweet to be a reactionary person out there, right? <laughs> but none of them went through the last crash. You got a bunch of millennials running around, literally giving people advice on homes. And all they've known is a real estate market that is flushed with massive amounts of money at low interest rates. They don't even know what an 8% mortgage looks like, but they're about to find out. Matter of fact, they're about to find out what a double digit uh, mortgage looks like. And I'm gonna be laughing all the way to the bank because we'll be covering it when their channel goes down and they're losing their homes. And, and you can't, and, and this doesn't make me happy, but what does frustrate me is watching people make tons of money leading others to the slaughter. And that's what's happening. You know, there was a channel um, a while back and he was 100% about hot shot trucking. And I wanted to have him on the channel because I knew that hot shot trucking was collapsing. And I was introduced to him by another YouTuber and we had a meeting. And in that meeting, he started becoming enraged, yelling at me because I didn't know what I was talking about. I wasn't in the industry, even though, I mean, I had a palm tree business. I had a hot shot, a hot shot set up. But um, I was you telling him why that industry was imploding and that the class A truckers, the big uh, haulers, were going to take a lot of their business as their industry collapsed too. their freight and it collapsed. And he's yelling and screaming at me. And no, he's not going to go on. And I said, if you will tell the people the truth, he goes, no, you're wrong. I don't see it collapsing. This is a true story. Two months later, his channel's down. And he did one last video saying, I lost everything, I'm stopping the channel because his entire channel was about that industry. When in all reality, he could have been even more successful, like I told him back then, if you just tell the other truckers the truth and then how to diversify their holdings and how not to get into debt. And they would, they would attach onto you even more because you'd be telling them, you're not a cheerleader anymore for the industry, you're a cheerleader for their success. He, we found out that literally that day that we had that argument, he was having a truck taken away by the bank. Just blows my mind. And the thing is, is that you always see the truth come out over time. You'll always see who was right over time. And quite frankly, very few people on the internet come out and they try and be a forecaster and say, look, this is where I believe this is going. Hey, this is YouTube. There's no professionals in here. Come on. And not only that, let me ask you this. Let's say I, I said I was a professional, which I'm not. I'm not licensed to tell you what to do with your money. How many people do you know right now, financial advisors that don't know they're behind from a hole in the wall? I mean, honestly, just tell me down there. Type one, if you if you know somebody that that has went to school, went got licenses to go, you know, do money, all they do, all they are is a paper pusher. They're a glorified car salesman because they're sitting there going, hey, you know, we're just going to sell you a prepackaged financial instrument. And if you lose your money, well, I don't know what to tell you. There's no, there's no loss there. Well, I'm not one of them. I'm an investor. And that's why I could see these cycles. And most of these people that go to school can't because they're not taught those cycles and they don't have the real life world experience to deal with that. And that's what's happening in the housing market right now. It says here, and again, we're talking for people that just jumped on, we're talking about the realities of what's happening in the housing market and how misinformed people are because of what the media is saying. They're saying right here in this story that owners are uh, on strike. Sellers, sorry, sellers of properties are on strike. Freaking kidding me? On strike? No, you're in bondage. You're locked into your house now, buddy. Guess what? You can't afford a new house because you can't afford the new payment because the interest rate, the taxes, everything's going up. It says here, um, this, and they're going to talk about this. Secondly, I'm just jumping through the story because I want to get to this big insurance story. The phenomenon known as the lock-in effect has resulted in significant reduction in the number of U.S. homes being placed on the market. This can be attributed to the rationale decision-making of move-up buyers who find it emote economically disadvantages, dis, I don't even know that word, to sell their current homes, relinquishing their favorable 2% or 3% mortgage rates only to acquire a new percent with new property with a higher 6 or 7% interest rate. And it says this reluctance among sellers has led to no, a noteworthy decline in new listings. Listen, check this out. This author is so dumb. Think about it. All we're talking about is the percentage. You're not. 
sorry and to everyone that's getting on i'm under the weather today so i'm sorry i'm not my normal self but you think about how dumb this author is and then how dumb the people that listen to this go well this is the truth because it's in print because we believe everything the media says it's not just the mortgage that's a small part of it because remember a mortgage is made up of uh, four items principal interest taxes and insurance so what's gone up the uh Thank you, Nicholas, for the super chat. The principal has gone up because the price of the home's gone up. Not just the interest rate. Just here's the interest rate. Index finger. The principal has gone up. Let's put interest rate away. Oh, I shouldn't, didn't mean to do that. Um, my point being, <laughs> I really didn't mean to do that. Um, <laughs> see, you just got to laugh sometimes. Ah, um, Hmm. How do you recover from that one on live? The, the principal's gone up. The taxes have gone up. I'm sorry. And the insurance has gone up. Now let's dive into this next story because I can't recover from that. Jeez, though. <laughs> okay. So the author doesn't even know it. Everyone's always focused on the interest. They're not focused on the other effects that are going to collapse the market. All right, here we go. Oh, while everyone's on, for everyone that bought this, uh, the real estate crash course, there's four new lessons at the editor right now. They should be up by Sunday. Okay. They're all yours. Thank you. Um, all right. Let's, oh, here we go. Here we go. Now, I've talked about this in Florida. What is it? 13, uh, 13 insurance companies have pulled out of the state because of hurricanes and costs. Two major, um, insurance companies have pulled out of California. Not They are no longer writing new policies, State Farm and Farmers, right? Now it's going to get even worse. Now I want you to remember this. As it becomes harder, because less companies and farmers in State Farm in California are massive. And remember, no, ma no matter what, if you don't live in California, this is going to affect you, okay? Because California is, what, the eighth largest economy on earth. It is uh, massive in compared to GDP, compared to the rest of the United States. And it has shockwaves. So, okay. And again, I want you to understand this because people are like, I don't care what happens in California. You should. Because not only do they write stupid laws that other states end up doing, but what happens is, you know, State Farm doesn't just write policies in California. Uh, farmers, AAA, um, other, other, what I'm saying is other insurance companies that are in your state also in California. And so if they get hit financially in California, they're going to have to change policy and raise prices in your state as well. So you have a few things going on. These companies cannot pay the exorbitant rates now to rebuild a home because of fire, earthquake, flood, hurricane damage, right? Because the expense of everything, the raw materials, the, uh, the employees to, to, to fix it, the workers, um, all of that stuff is now in, in time clocks. It's harder to get things um, repaired in a timely manner, staying in line with their policies. So they're pulling out. Well, I told you that I was uh, down in Southern California a few, like what, a month ago and was there when a uh, foreclosure noting, note posting was posted. And the gentleman that posted the foreclosure is telling me that the home there was only $9,900 owed on it. And it was worth in its present condition, $350,000. That mortgage had been around and stable since 1994. So it was, it was a higher rate. It was at, at what rates are today, actually. Ironically, they never refied it through the last 15 years of exorbitantly low rates. They never, they never refied it. They're about to pay it off, $9,900. But it was being repoed or foreclosed on and it went to auction because they didn't have insurance, because they couldn't simply afford it, because they had a sick uh, uh, family member. Really tragic story, right? What's even more tragic is that they don't truly believe that it's going to be taken. They're just like in denial, total denial. And it's, it's done, right? It's being taken. And so many people fell trapped to that in 2007. In 2008, they did not believe it. And the bank kept, a lot of banks kept stringing them on, stringing them on, only ultimately to repossess their house, to take their home from them. And people are in denial right now. So check this story out and, and think about in your mind what happened to this couple and how hard it's going to be for them to get more insurance and where they're at. 
California couple loses homeowner's insurance because they drained their pool to save water. There's a drone photo of their pool, right? Now, insurance companies do not like you having an empty pool. Why? Because a child or a person can fall into it and become severely injured. They don't even like it when you don't have a cover um, on your pool because of drownings. Uh, insurance companies send special agents to come and photograph yearly your pool. I know people with pools and they, they have to do all this extra stuff because there's so much liability with that, right? These people had to save water. That's how bad financially it is for them. So when you think, oh, just fill with dirt, you're like, okay, do they have the money to do that? Think about so many people. Now they're losing their insurance. So now they've got to go and find another insurance company. They're going to ask because, and they don't even have to ask you. They know you have a pool. They pull up that deal and other insurance companies share their information. So they pull up and go, oh, you just lost your insurance because you drained a pool. They already know the price is going to be skyrocketing. If they, they probably can't even get insurance at all, period, until they do something with this pool but they're in financial hardship. They're going to lose their house. It's going to hit the foreclosure market. You see, when I say that you need to get ready for this housing crash, I'm not joking. Like there are so many people that are gonna lose their homes because they're in complete denial. Type three, if you have found friends and family that are complete nutball because of what in, what's happened over the last three years, that they can't, figure out on their own. They don't have enough common sense to, to decide, oh, what should I put in my body? When am I being forced? Is this a good thing? Is it really a good thing? What's happened in history? Um, you know, oh, this can't be good for the economy. All that kind of stuff. Like how many people, you see all these threes, right? Now think about that. How many of those people, type four, if you know those people that are nutball, that can't think on their own, that, that they believe everything they're told on the media, or they lash out when anything would go against their ideals. They, they can't comprehend and think and contemplate stuff. How many of those people type four own a home? Think about this. How many of those people own a home or have nice cars and they're on debt? And then you sit there and you go, okay, um, well, those people can't think very well for themselves. So they're probably listening to Joe Biden saying how good the economy is. And they're probably listening to Jerome Powell saying we're going to have a soft landing. And they're probably paying attention to, uh, you know, Jamie Dimon, too, because, hey, he runs the biggest bank in the world. So whatever he says goes, hey, let's put more money in the stock market. Gold's crazy. You're you're an alarmist. Right. Those are the people that you're going to be buying homes from. Now, they're not going to be the people, you know, but this is the kind of thinking you got to have. and. In a world where common sense ain't so common, you get where I'm going with this. You know, I've, I've talked to buddies that I work with for a long time and they see where I'm in now and they go, and they just don't get it. And I'm like, all you had to do is listen five years ago, work hard, put money away. Like the working hard and making the hard decisions is not living like a rich person when you're really a poor person. You actually live like a poor person when you're a rich person. That's, that's how you get rich. That's how everyone throughout history has gotten rich. So you look at the stories like this and it says right here, it's becoming harder and harder to get a homeowner insurance policy in California. State Farm and all states stopped writing new policies, citing wildfire risks. Others are limiting new customers. Oh, and just, you know, can I, can I tell you as an experience from a firefighter? I'm actually homesick today because I'm just feeling like crap. But um, <laughs> there's probably guys watching me right now. How sick is he? Um, I'm joking. They don't do that. But my point being is, uh, as a full-time firefighter, not every home is subject to wildfires. <laughs> There's lots of concrete, right? But that doesn't matter. State Farm goes, we're just pulling out. We're not writing any new policies. State, all state, uh, all state said that too. And then farmers has done it all as well. My point being is that they go, oh, it's fires, it's fires. And you're like, but you're not writing any policies. What about that? You know, those hundred homes right there. You know, surrounded by a mile of concrete. And they're like, nope, nope wildfire. So you got to realize they're just giving you a reason. There's big problems in the insurance industry right now. And, and people need to pay attention to this. Now, look at this. It says right here, and now several, several, uh, 
man, I'm sorry, I'm not feeling normal. And now several viewers tell Seven on your side that AAA is not renewing their long time policies and it has nothing to do with wildfires. These homeowners were surprised to find out aircraft and satellites were taking photos over their homes. They were baffled to find out the reasons AAA dropped their coverage, everything from clutter in the yard to draining a swimming pool to save water. It's and, and this is what the owner said. Apparently, they have some pictures and they notice clutter. Sven <laughs> said, I find that offensive. How dare you judge me because of my stuff? Uh-huh. Sven. Sven. Okay, I'm starting to get my sense of humor back. Said the yard in his workshop, not a hazard. Sven said, there was no chance to mitigate, clean up, do anything. It was just you're fired. This is, I think this is absolutely crazy. Now, Sven, you're going to have a hard time getting insurance. And the thing is, if you, if Sven owns a, uh, a mortgage, I think Sven's going to get fired from that too, real fast. They're going to go, we're taking your house. They're going to give you a notice and they're going to say you have a certain amount of time to rectify it, but they already start the paperwork because every so often they check. They make you approve that you've got homeowner's insurance. And so if you're in that window of time where they haven't checked, you're good. Go find some insurance. But if you don't, there is insane times. Look at the vital signs. Check this out. This guy, vital signs, says, Ninja, there's no price crash. Dude, please stop. Austin's down 14% right now. Uh, San Francisco is down near 30% from what prices we're selling at and what they're at now. My area right now. I told you about that house that I thought about. There was one for, that you were asking 1.2. Last year it would have sold for 1.9 like that. People are delusional. Just cool, cool. They sit there and they like, they compare what happened at their neighbor's house and, and they don't look at it. Oh wait, none of my neighbors are selling. There's only one house for sale. And it did go fast. Well, how did it sell? Did it sell to a hedge fund? Because there's that's happening a lot, or did it sell to a new people? And I go walking up to them, and I have this happens all the time. Is your first house? Yeah. I mean, did you use a forty year mortgage to get into it? It's absolutely blowing my way. People have no concept what's going on, and everyone also expects everything to happen overnight. So now you have what exactly happened, but literally ten times worse today than what happened in 2007 while all of the sellers were on strike. So now, and right now there's over 800,000 homes in this country that a bank will pay you upwards of $2,000 just to take back. Thank you so much. I don't even assess in for the uh, super chat. They will take pay you $2,000 just to take over the loan. There are so many people right now in pre-foreclosure. It is insane. And I'm getting pretty excited. So I just want to share all that with you guys. I put uh, more of the uh, $200 discount links uh, in for the real estate crash course so that you can see for yourself and, and you don't act like whoever that guy was that has no concept of what's going on with real estate prices. All right. Hope you guys have a great day. The Economic Ninja is out.